Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and we are potentially looking at the final iPhone 12 leaks. That's at least according to John Prosser, who released a video today detailing even more information about the iPhone 12. And based on this report and multiple other reports we have received over this year, it really does look like we know almost everything about the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. So for this video, I just wanted to update you with everything new that we learned today and go over this iPhone 12 lineup once again and kind of explain some of this new information and why Apple might be making certain choices. And lately, every time I've been doing a leaks and rumors video regarding any sort of Apple product, I feel like I'm mentioning John Prosser's name like a billion times in the video. So the team over here at Greg's Gadgets made this really intricate graphic and we now have an official John Prosser counter. But anyway, let's get into the video and go over some of this new John Prosser information, but first let's do a refresher with the design. So at this point, I'm pretty sure most of you watching know what this phone will look like, but for the people who don't, the iPhone 12 will feature a flat slab sided design, very similar to that of either the iPhone 4, 5, or probably more closely related to the new 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros. Besides that new flat sided design, according to John Prosser, we should also expect a smaller size notch, thanks to Apple moving the earpiece up more into the phone, allowing the face ID sensors to be the only component inside of the notch. And according to everything Apple Pro, the face ID sensor will be improved, featuring wider angles for unlocking, and it will also work at multiple different angles. This will also mark the release of the smallest and biggest flagship iPhone in years. John Prosser gave us the complete breakdown of these products with names and which I have to give myself credit for because in that thumbnail I did for the last iPhone 12 video, I actually correctly predicted the names without any inside information. But I really shouldn't take that much credit because it looks like we will be getting an iPhone 12 with the smallest size being a 5.4 inch display, which would have a very similar body size to that of the current iPhone SE, but feature a full screen design instead of having a top and bottom bezel. After that, we would be getting a 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Max. And in John Prosser's latest video, he is confirming the iPhone 12 Max name. After that, of course, we would be getting the iPhone 12 Pro with a 6.1 inch display, the same as the iPhone 12 Max, and then an iPhone 12 Pro Max as the biggest iPhone ever with a 6.7 inch display. And speaking of those displays, there's some important distinction that you should be made aware of. The regular iPhone 12 series will be featuring OLED displays unlike the current lineup where the cheaper iPhone 11 has an LCD display. According to Prosser, these iPhone 12 displays will be made by BOE and will be referred to as a Super Retina display. Now, these displays will not have the 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate and just have a 60Hz refresh rate, and that wording of the Super Retina display means that these iPhones will be reverting to a screen quality that is similar to the iPhone X and iPhone XS. Apple adopted new terminology of Super Retina XDR display with the iPhone 11, and that featured increased contrast ratios and display brightness at 800 nits for standard brightness and 1200 nits of peak brightness, which would mainly be used when watching HDR movies. So even though all of these phones will be featuring OLED displays now, these BOE displays seem to be taking a step back. They will feature a lower contrast ratio of a million to one and should probably only feature around 625 nits of brightness. The most important thing about this BOE display is that these are going to be much cheaper components than Samsung's display technology, which have been reported to cost around 70 to $100 per display, per iPhone. That is a really expensive component. Probably one of the most expensive components of the modern day iPhone 11 Pro. This is how the iPhone 12 is going to be able to reportedly hit that incredibly great price point of just $650 on the 5.4 inch model and $750 on the 6.1 inch model. 
John Prosser is also dropping another bombshell on us that the iPhone 12 will feature 128 gigabytes of base storage starting at $649, doubling the current base storage, which starts at 64 gigabytes. To upgrade to a 256 gigabyte model, it will cost you $100 more. The iPhone 12 will also come with four gigabytes of RAM, feature an aluminum body just like the iPhone 11 and iPhone XR. They will be 5G capable phones and will have a dual camera system. This dual camera system should be similar to the one found on the iPhone 11 and include a wide angle and ultra wide angle camera. Now let's move on to the iPhone 12 Pro series and according to Prosser, these look like they're gonna be getting some substantial upgrades. Now one of the things I've seen the most in my comment sections and just online in general is why would someone pay more for an iPhone 12 Pro when the iPhone 12 is also going to have an OLED display. Well, like I alluded to before when explaining the iPhone 12's display, it's the display quality. The iPhone 12 Pro will have a Samsung OLED display, not a BOE one, and it will have the same or better specifications thanks to the Super Retina XDR designation. So expect it to have a higher brightness ratio, expect it to have an increased contrast ratio of at least 2 million to 1, and John Prosser is also saying that the iPhone 12 Pro series will be getting a ProMotion display. We've seen this technology on the iPad Pros and other Android smartphones, and now it's looking like Apple is ready to add this to this year's iPhone lineup. Based on Prosser's reporting, it sounds like the technology behind this will be very similar to how the iPad Pros do this with a variable refresh rate. So the display will not always be running at a full 120 Hertz refresh rate. In fact, on the iPad, it can shift the refresh rate even lower than the standard 60 Hertz to save battery life. For example, the current iPad Pro will run at full 120 Hertz when you're swiping or scrolling, using gestures on the display, or drawing with the Apple Pencil. However, this can lower down substantially. For example, if you're viewing a photo and not touching the display, it can lower that refresh rate all the way down to just 24 Hertz, and you would be none the wiser. The same for watching a movie, which usually is in 24 frames per second. There's no reason why the display should be running at the full 120 hertz speed. Apple can even adapt that display to 48 hertz if you're watching a 30 FPS movie, and then scale again all the way back up to 120 hertz. This allows the iPad Pro to feel just as fast and fluid when you need it, and to smartly lower down the refresh rate for your benefit for viewing native content, and most importantly, to save battery life. Because like I said in the latest episode of my podcast, GadgetCast, and if you aren't subscribed to GadgetCast, you really should be. I'll leave a link down in the description, and we've even had John Prosser on the show a few times now. I don't think Apple is going to make you choose between a refresh rate and a resolution. That's something a lot of Android phones are doing, even the latest flagship phone from Samsung, the Galaxy S20, if you want that 120 hertz refresh rate, you have to set your phone to a 1080p resolution. And that's just not Apple style. I don't think they would ship the phone with the option to turn down the resolution and have a higher refresh rate, or to have a higher resolution with a lower refresh rate. Apple usually just enables the options that they think will make the best possible experience for the consumer. So this is one of the reasons why they really gotta get this right. They can't take a way out like Samsung can where you can toggle different options to save battery life. Furthermore, according to everything Apple Pro, the batteries inside the Pro models will get bigger as well to help preserve battery life with that high refresh rate, saying that the 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max could feature a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. Also, the 120 Hertz refresh rate won't be the only display improvement. According to John Prosser, Apple will also feature a 10-bit color depth panel, which the iPhone 11 Pro was only an 8-bit color panel. A 10-bit panel could display over 1 billion colors compared to the 6.7 million found on the current 8-bit panel of the iPhone 11 Pro. 
Prosser also says that the iPhone 12 will have six gigabytes of RAM, two gigabytes more than the standard iPhone 12. It will start at $999 for 128 gigabytes of storage, 1,099 for 256 gigabytes, and 1,299 for 512 gigabytes. The bigger size 6.7 inch max version will start at the same 128 gigabytes for $1,099, $1,199 for 256 gigabytes, and $1,399 for 512 gigabytes. Just like the current iPhone 11 Pro, the 12 Pro will have a stainless steel body as opposed to the aluminum found on the lower end models. Of course, it will come packed with an A14 chip, a 5G modem, and a triple camera array complete with a LiDAR scanner. Now, according to Everything Apple Pro, there's going to be some camera changes. First off, the zoom camera will be increasing from 2X to a 3X native zoom and allow for even more digital zoom options. Second, Apple will have even better low light photography with faster autofocus and better image stabilization with noise reduction in dark environments thanks to the new smart HDR algorithm. We are still expecting a 12 megapixel sensor on all cameras, but that new LiDAR scanner will be gaining some new features besides enhanced augmented reality that it currently already supports on the iPad Pros. According to everything Apple Pro, the LiDAR sensor will be used to greatly improve the accuracy of Apple's portrait mode feature. Overall, and I think I've been saying this since the beginning of covering these iPhone 12 leaks, it looks like the iPhone 12 really is going to be the greatest iPhone lineup in history, with models starting all the way down at $399 for the iPhone SE to just $649 on a flagship iPhone 12, with options going all the way up to $1,099 on that 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max. John Prosser says that these might as well be the final Apple leaks with no or very little new information to come out after this, so this could be the last video I have updating you on the iPhone 12. But if I know anything about the world of Apple leaks and rumors, there's always something unexpected coming just around the corner. So if you want to learn about all those unexpected things when they come, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast GadgetCast and be sure to let me know what you think of all these iPhone 12 leaks and rumors in the comments below. I feel like I'm plugging myself way too much here, but check out the links in the description if you want to support the channel. And as always, Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.